Hi, this is the Tropical Tibbet for Monday evening, June 1st, the first official day of the Atlantic hurricane season. And appropriately, we have a new storm to track. We've already had two storms this year, Arthur and Bertha. This is Tropical Depression 3 here in the southern Gulf of Mexico, likely to at some point become Tropical Storm Cristobal, the third storm of the season. This was Tropical Storm Amanda, it came on shore in Mexico and Guatemala and then has come around into the southern Gulf of Mexico, re-emerging over the Bay of Campeche uh, this morning. And if we take a closer look at it on visible here just before the sun sets, uh, you'll be able to make out maybe beneath these murky mid-level clouds a little bit of rotation in the low levels. There's north wind here and south wind here, and uh, this can be seen on Mexican radar as well. Uh, but suffice it to say there's a circulation here that has emerged and is moving westward this evening, albeit rather slowly. Now the system for the moment is rather broad and disorganized, uh, but since it has now emerged over water, this will likely change a bit over the next 24 hours or so. Uh, convection is likely to increase now that the circulation is over water and is able to pick up uh, a lot of moisture from the ocean surface. Uh, this is currently mostly a flooding problem for Mexico as it has been since Amanda made landfall and moved inland and there's a larger picture here uh, where TD3 is currently embedded within a much larger monsoon gyre or Central American gyre as they're called uh, that Amanda kind of helped to form and we have this really large broader area of rotation within which TD3 currently resides and it's kind of at this point rotating around the northern side of this larger gyre that you can imagine being centered maybe to the south of TD3. And this is going to be one of the steering mechanisms over the next couple of days uh, that is likely to take TD3 a little bit more toward the west and then potentially even back south toward the Mexican coastline somewhere in this region. The details are a little murky uh, as the situation is a little bit complex and involves multiple components. We're going to try to go through a bunch of them now. Uh, one of these on water vapor imagery here is uh, the upper level flow around TD3. Uh, we can see the outflow coming from the convection, very healthy outflow in these upper level cirrus. There's also a little bit of a kink in the upper level flow that you can see here over northern Mexico and Texas where we have a little bit of an upper level trough that was uh, over northern Mexico yesterday and is now starting to lift out over Texas and start to uh, move out of the Mexican region. At the same time we have this uh, large cutoff low off of the Baja Peninsula and this is starting to foster the amplification of a ridge downstream of that low. And as this trough exits, this ridge is going to amplify quite a bit. And we can see this happen on the GFS model forecast, 250 millibar wind. Here now looking at the Eastern Pacific, TD3 is here right now. This is valid at the time of this video recording. There's that big low off the Baja California. There's our trough lifting northeastward through Texas. And what's gonna happen now is that this ridge is going to start amplifying such that when we get to tomorrow morning, we can see our trough continues to lift out over the northwestern gulf and this ridge starts to bulge. And by the time we get to Wednesday morning, you can see it now expanding over the Mexican highlands. And what was southwest flow aloft over the area of TD3 now becomes northerly flow in the mid-levels and upper levels of the troposphere. And TD3 can be seen on the GFS forecast here, uh, closer to the Mexican coastline as it is now being turned southward in part due to this building ridge over Mexico, which is now imparting a northerly steering influence on the storm. And again, this is early Wednesday morning, so a little less than a day and a half from now. Now, in addition to this, we again have that gyre, which is trying to rotate it around uh, to the south as well. So these two steering influences are trying to shove TD3 back down into Mexico. And this is the first major difficulty and uncertainty in this forecast, is whether or not the storm actually goes all the way back inland to Mexico and the associated mountains that exist over Central America. If this occurs, the storm is likely to dissipate and will be left with a broad gyre once again. And we see this happen on the GFS here at the 36 hour forecast Wednesday morning showing the storm very close to the Mexican coastline not too far from where it is now and if we go forward another 24 hours well the storm is gone now buried in the mountains of Central America and again this moist broad gyre is left behind not unlike what the picture looked like just yesterday so not a lot of change here once this gets inland except more flooding and perhaps a localized area of higher winds at the point of landfall. 
The European model is uh, a little bit different here. It's a little bit stronger than the GFS, and by Wednesday morning, it actually has this all the way over, getting close to the state of Veracruz before making landfall, and this is a little bit of a, a stronger system. Uh, not a hurricane yet on the model, but still quite potent. And uh, then you see it actually dives inland here, much farther west than the GFS on the most recent run. And there are some indications that some of these models, like the European, have been a little bit too far west. Even the GFS until the most recent run was much farther west with this track. And looking at the current satellite picture, uh, the center of circulation, like we identified before, is somewhere in here. This is a fair, just a tad, but a significant tad east of where it's supposed to be at this time of the evening, where most of the models had it a little bit more over here uh, to the west of the longitude of this lagoon here. And instead, it's, it's more in line with where the lagoon is at the moment. And this is clearly progressing to the west a little bit slower than expected. What does this mean? Well, it implies that the ultimate track in terms of how far west this gets may not get all the way over here, it may be less likely to actually get to Veracruz or, or this region over here in the short term. Instead, we may see it meander mostly in this region. This is not a guarantee, but that seems to be one of the indications we're getting today as far as the motion of this system. And we have seen the GFS in the most recent run come to a landfall much farther east. It was over here in prior runs. And so this could be a trend that we'll keep an eye on tonight and tomorrow morning. Either way, flooding remains uh, the greatest concern here for this entire region as there is a broad area of rainfall associated with this. It's not just about the landfall point. So what happens after this? If these model runs that show this making landfall are correct, we're going to be left with something like the GFS has here on Thursday morning. Again, a broad monsoon Central American gyre centered over the continent and then you know, not over water uh, yet. So what will happen after this? Well, remember that upper level trough we talked about that made this journey from northern Mexico across Texas and Louisiana, that ends up over uh, the North Gulf Coast by Thursday morning, and it is now starting to kind of dig in here to the northern Gulf of Mexico, and you can see the kink in this upper level flow that's showing up now. As this trough digs in, it's going to start to try to drudge up moisture and whatever's down here from the Western Caribbean and the Yucatan Peninsula area and try to drag it northward. Whenever troughs dig into the Western Gulf of Mexico, something always comes up. Uh, and the steep tropical moisture associated with this gyre is going to try to get pulled up. Whether or not there's a tropical cyclone embedded within this gyre at the time, whether or not TD3 is still here sitting over water, we're not entirely sure, but whatever is there is going to eventually come north. And if we look at this on the GFS now, we'll see this happen on Friday afternoon on the model. We start to see this gyre begin to intensify and we have the development of a new area of low pressure on its northeastern side that starts to come up. And we can see that we have a bona fide cyclone in the central Gulf by Saturday afternoon. And this is fairly long range at this point, five days from now. It takes a long time for this whole thing to develop, but we do get a storm eventually come up into the Gulf. And in this case, on this particular model, this is a separate storm than TD3 that we have down here right now. That dies, something else comes up. That's one possible scenario. Uh, this, on this particular model, is also kind of a sloppy system because remember, whenever we have an upper level trough dig into the northern Gulf like this, there's always going to be subsidence on the large scale, sinking air, generating drying of the air mass on the back side of the trough. And this dry air is always going to try to get entrained into whatever cyclone tries to develop here and wrap it in. And this is something we actually see here on these most recent GFS runs, which actually shows that dry air starting to wrap into the circulation. And in this case, this would be more of a subtropical system than tropical on this particular model run. This is not uh, necessarily anything close to reality given the uncertainties we're dealing with here. There are other models uh, that depict legitimate hurricanes in the northern Gulf because if TD3 actually remains over water, we could see it do a loop and then come up and be in a similar position by the weekend, but it's actually a different storm and it's actually a stronger storm uh, because it never made landfall and it never dissipated and we could have something more concrete here by this time. It all depends really on whether it moves into Mexico first and after that what kind of mess might come north if TD3 dissipates. 
Will TD3 dissipate over Mexico? It's, it's going to be close. Again, these short-term track, it's not moving very much. It could get very close to the coast. It may loop just offshore. It may come all the way inland. It could be just 50 miles. That makes the difference. We're going to have to kind of watch and see on this one. But we know that we still have several days yet to watch this near Mexico. It's not coming up anytime soon. It's going to take most of this week. And given the model guidance that we have right now with uh, cyclones in the middle of the Gulf by Friday or Saturday, it could be even early next week before we actually get impacts to the North Gulf Coast um, if this thing takes a long time to come north. So if you're in the Gulf Coast region right now, this is not something to, to be of imminent worry, but we're definitely looking for some kind of system to come out of Central America uh, either this weekend or early next week. So that's something to keep an eye out for and make sure you have your hurricane plan ready just in case something comes your way, uh, whether that's strong or weak or sloppy at this point. Not not certain, uh, not something we can tell you right now, but there are possibilities for both scenarios on the table, something stronger or something weaker. It's really going to depend on a few things uh, and it's uh, still something that is rather murky. For now, this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center in which they also cite a lot of uncertainty and low confidence, but right now, this is what they have, a track uh, dipping down toward the northern Mexican coastline and then looping back around, not quite making landfall, and then coming back north. Uh, into the central gulf uh, during the weekend and they note that again this could make landfall or it may not either way we're dealing with strong potential flooding threats with lots of prolonged rainfall that have already been occurring ever since amanda originally made landfall from the south and it will continue as this depression continues to meander in the area primary threat is the flooding we do have a tropical storm warning as well across a wide section of the coastline for potential winds over 40 miles per hour at times, especially near the point that this makes its closest approach to the coast and or a landfall. And then again, as this starts to come north, this might be this storm or it might be something new. NHC also mentions this in their discussion. If this comes inland, again, this could die, something new might come up. Either way, something is likely to be coming northward during the weekend through the Gulf of Mexico. And again, lots of question marks for the Gulf Coast, not only where, but when and what kind of impacts? Not entirely sure. You can always guarantee that there's gonna be rain, but anything else, not really sure what to tell you. We can't even necessarily tell you where the rain's gonna be just yet because so much depends on whether this dies first and we get something new to come up. And if not, when exactly does it come up? Because that'll determine the steering. Does it turn left toward Texas, Louisiana, or does it go straight up toward the eastern Gulf Coast instead? That's a question for another time. We're still talking about a week from now, and we all know that things in the tropics change from day to day. So we'll continue tracking newly formed Tropical Depression 3, and that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.